Good morning, church. Good morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Can we all stand if we can? We're going to worship the Lord together. Amen. When all I see, when all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain view. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am saved with you. More chairs, declare. If you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus is nothing impossible for you. You are the ashes, you see the beauty.
Lift your eyes and see, Lord. Lift this morning, Lord. You're where I have come from. Raise a hallelujah to you, Lord. Praise the hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise the hallelujah. Come on, church, louder. Louder than the unbelief. We raise the hallelujah. I raise the If you believe in church, I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Come on, death is defeated. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I'll raise the hallelujah with everything inside of me. I'll raise the hallelujah. Come on, church. We will see the darkness. I will watch the darkness flee. I'll raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. We'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. Say you lost your hold on me. Say you lost your hold on me. of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roll, up from the ashes, hope will arise, death is defeated, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sing, in the middle of Oh, 
my voice and it's not because stags won yesterday it's because I've had a, a revelation about the power of God and I want to keep raising a hallelujah I want to keep lifting my voice louder and louder and louder and I want my voice to go further and further for the presence of God that we might touch this land that we might touch people's lives with the presence of a living God raise a hallelujah this morning I want you to not stop raising hallelujah when you leave this place. I want you to keep on doing it. It's great to be together and to raise a hallelujah. But I want you to do it when you're in the quiet of the chemist or quietness of the workplace or the college place. I want you to raise a hallelujah because it's wonderful to lift God and praise Him in places. He wants us to be strong men, women of a living God because we're a child of God. I, I've got some highlighted stuff in my Bible. And I just feel this is for somebody this morning. And I just want to encourage you with this, because this is what I was given some years ago. It's highlighted. I've ringed uh, six things. It's from Isaiah 41. It says, from, chapter, from verse 9, it says, I took you from the ends of the earth. From its furthest corners, I called you. I want you to know that you've been called from the furthest corner. I don't care how far you thought you were away from God or you might feel from God right now. God has called you from the furthest corner. And he said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and you and have not rejected you. You know, I just so passionate about a God that hasn't rejected me because he'd have every right to reject me but by his grace and his mercy each and every day. So, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Do you believe that this morning? There's your God. Because, of course, this prophecy was coming over at a time when they were deciding between which God they wanted to follow. So this is a word to us, but then it was a word to the Israelite nation to say, do not be saved, for I am your God. I will strengthen and I will help you. I will strengthen and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So look, servant of God, he did not reject you, but chose you. Don't be afraid because he's with you. He says, I'm your God. Let nothing terrify you this morning. I will make you strong and help you. I will protect you and save you. I will protect you and save you. And I want somebody this morning to just embrace that this morning. Because that's the power of God. That's the love of God. That's the grace of God. That's what God wants for your life and for my life. To know his strength. To know he didn't reject us. And not to be afraid this morning. 
in the circumstances that you might face because God will strengthen you. He will uphold you by his right hand. And we pray, Lord, this morning for those in those difficult situations, Lord, that you will strengthen them. We pray for Lewis and the family and the sudden loss of the son, Andrew, this morning. We pray for that, Lord. We pray for that strength. We pray for that power and that resurrection spirit to be strong in this situation. Make them strong, Lord, we pray. We continue to pray for John and the family, Lord, as we approach Tuesday. And we just pray for your strength. Pray for your strength, Lord. Such a difficult time. We just pray for that strength. Because I can only know your presence in times like these. To give strength. To give strength to the family. We celebrate a life on Tuesday. Lived well. Lived well, Lord. We commend them to you, Lord God. Power them through the power of your spirit. Speak to them in their times of loneliness, in their times, Lord God, of their moments and memories, Lord God. Be with them. You said, I am with you and I will uphold you by my right hand. I will uphold you by my right hand. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray for the strength of your words to lift us and strengthen us in the things of the kingdom of God this morning. You see, I believe these words. I believe these words. I know it can impact your life this morning. And if you've been impacted by these words before, I believe they'll impact you again and strengthen you and cause you to grow and increase in the things of the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word and your presence this morning. We're going to continue our worship now, and part of our worship is our tithes and our giving. And uh, the bucket's going to come round, and the offering basket's going to come round. If you're a visitor with us this morning, you're free to give, but we're just glad to see you. There's no pressure. Let the basket pass you by. We're just glad to see you in the building this morning. And most of us give by standing order or direct debit or bank draft. But it's still important that we give the opportunity for people to give into the kingdom of God, that they might plant into a thing of the kingdom of God to cause his kingdom to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. And I invite you to stand up in the future. How great the chasm and between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name. Verse again. How great. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name. the darkness through the darkness your loving kindness so through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my name
hope for an eternity and is my living hope here and now in this moment in this day hallelujah oh thank you team amazing time of worship into the presence of God it's not about me it's about him and entering into his presence and then what God can do with me when I'm in his presence and I just give myself gladly over to him at every moment at every opportunity because I just want to see what God can do. I want to see how far God can take me. How far can God take me and push me and move me into the things of the kingdom of God? I'm just open. I'm just open. There's things I'd rather not do, but I'm just open to what God wants me to do. And I've stopped putting labels. I've stopped putting conditions on it. But just to say, here I am, Lord, send me. And that's my desire and that's my hope that God will use me and continue to use me and I continue to grow and I continue to climb the mountain to be in his presence each and every day. Amen. Please take a seat for a moment. Thanks team. Well it's a great pleasure this morning to welcome Jan to come and bring the word to us and I think she deserves a real big round of applause. I'm excited and that's not me putting pressure on Jan, because I know Jan carries a prophetic word, and I'm just so encouraged by your faithfulness. So, come on, give her a round of applause. 
Oh, you've got some. Right. Good morning, church. Morning. morning, family. It's fantastic to be part of this family, the family of God. There's nothing like it. Now, one thing I promised myself was that I would look at the time and I would make sure that I didn't go on too long. What I'm going to bring you this morning, I really honestly believe God has given it to me. And um, even in the, the prayer meeting this morning in the back room, I've had some confirmations in, in just what people were praying and um, in what Daniel specifically brought a word for me this morning. And, and so I believe that I'm going to give you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth because I'm going straight from the Word of God. Yeah. Well, I'm really, really excited about the vision that we've got in this church. It's unfolding all the time, but I'm really beginning to get... Well, I am very excited, not beginning. I'm very excited about it. And in the prayer meeting a couple of Mondays back, um, Glenn had put up some words and... Those words are living with me. And Ian and I are praying into those words. And we are feeling empowered by those three words. Restoration. God is in the business of restoring things. Things that are broken. Things that need fixing. Is in the business of restoration. Making people whole. Renewing yeah. is in the business of restoring, and that's part of the vision of this church. We're also looking for breakthrough. Yeah. And do you know, I got at the beginning of this year, and I, I shared this with you, I was simply hanging my dressing, up on, dressing gown up on the back of my door, and I felt God speak to me, just simply saying, you know, I want to grant your requests. And Ian and I have been praying over certain issues for many years, and some of those issues we have daily brought to God. And now seems to be the time when God is, is beginning to move for us, and we're seeing breakthrough. And only a couple of weeks ago, we were crying before God over a particular issue. I was in tears over it. And I said, Lord, I'm looking for a breakthrough. Will you please encourage, just encourage me, Lord, that we're on the right track. And the very next day, we saw a breakthrough in this particular need. Now, I can't share that with you, but it was, it was an utter miracle. It was fantastic, and I, and I believe God is saying to us as a church, we are going to see breakthrough. We've got to keep uh, it faithful in our praying, keep persevering, and we'll see walls come down. Yeah. And, we, and I feel as though I've, we've started to see it personally, Ian and I. Miracles. Wow, miracles. God is a miracle God. He's a miracle working God. It's just simply who he is. In fact, to him, well, everything he does isn't a miracle because a miracle is something that we cannot do ourselves. It goes above and beyond what we can ever achieve. Well, there's nothing like that for God. So for him, he's, not, he's even wrong saying he's, he's a miracle working God. He's just working out of who he is. And it's miracles to us. And I do believe we're going to see some miracles. I believe I've already been told this morning by Glenn about somebody who is actually seeing miracles in their life. Well, come on, because we are going to see it. Now, I've got a, a real sense and a real urgency in me that we've got to be prepared. And Jackie this morning in her prayers uh, in the back, talked about us pre being prepared. Prepare us, Lord. Be prepared. I've got at the top of my headings, my title is Let's Be Prepared. So I felt really encouraged this morning by that. 
And, I, and Daniel gave me a word and he said, G uh, give the prophetic word. And I'm going to step out with boldness this morning because as I prepared this word, God gave me the most wonderful picture. And I believe it's prophetic. So I'm saying it from a position now of boldness because Daniel gave me the word to speak the prophetic. The picture was, and I'm not really one for pictures. It's not how God speaks to me usually, but I've had a picture. And it was of an ocean where the waves start to build. And you know those great big waves, they start and you can see them rising up and getting bigger and bigger. And the momentum, it just pushes it forward and you get this great crash on the shoreline and it's magnificent. And do you know what I, what I believe God said to me is, get prepared for the wave. Because there's a wave that's building. Now, I don't know when it's actually going to break on the shore, but I know that there's a momentum starting. And this wave is building. And it is going to come crashing onto the shore. And we're going to be caught in an amazing wave of the Holy Spirit. And that is my prophetic word. And I'm, I'm going to be bold and say, that's prophetic. Because that's what Daniel told me to say. Give the prophetic word. Now, I've got confidence that what I'm, I'm going to talk about today is of God. We're going to see this powerful wave. We've got to be prepared. We've got to... Start getting, well, in this church, we've actually got some fantastic foundations. Daniel preached a couple of weeks back about the foundations being strong and firm. God gave us a word last week about firm foundations. And I know we've got them, but we're going to have to remember and draw to mind these foundations. Because I believe that what's coming we are going to have to stand on firm foundation. Because, you see, the enemy is not going to like this one minute, one bit. The principalities and the powers of the air want to do everything to stop the advancement of the kingdom, to disrupt his people and his church, to bring disharmony, disunity, and to shake us. That's what the principalities and powers want to do. Well, do you know what? We're on the victory side. And do you know what Jesus said? The very gates of hell won't stop us from pushing forward as church because he's already won the victory. And he needs to, yeah, we're telling you, principalities and powers, we're telling you, we're declaring that Jesus is already the victor. And that we are going to stand firm as a church and be united in going forward and seeing the community out there and round about us touched and moved for Jesus. Yeah. Now, I can't tell you when this wave is going to hit the shore, as I've already said. But, you know, like Elijah, who saw that little fist of a cloud after three years of drought and he got prepared and he ran ahead to, to miss the deluge. What I want to say this morning is a preparation and you may, you may think, what's she talking about this for? Because as a church, we are very, very blessed. We have a beautiful sense of unity in this church. We've got a real love that when people come in, it's one of the first things they say about us. We felt the love, and that's precious. And that is because we're dwelling together in unity, because we're united. But the prophetic word, I believe, is that when this wave hits, the enemy will start to worm his way in. He will start to undermine us. And one of the things he will do it with 
is by bringing in some disunity. Now, Paul's two priorities that I see were to proclaim the gospel and to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Those were his priorities. And you'll find that those priorities of Paul, they come right, they go right through his writings. And you'll find it very much so in Philippians. And Ian and I have done a little bit of a study, just a, a small amount of study around Philippians. And I just want to read to you some verses from Philippians chapter 2. So Philippians chapter 2. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Now, as a group of Christian people, i.e. his church, we are more effective and we are stronger when we work together corporately than when we operate on our own in isolation. That's why God puts us in community. He wants us part of a community. And if church functions as God intends it to, with, in unity and supporting one another, then our witness to the outside world will be more effective. And that's our mission. Our mission isn't to just gather and enjoy one another's company. It's great to do that, but our mission is to see the kingdom of God increase and to be in the business of with working with God to restore, to bring restoration, reconciliation. We are Christ's ambassadors. Amen. That came out in that Monday night prayer. Christ's ambassadors. We are his representatives. Uh, what's the word? Rep representatives, that's it. I couldn't think of it for a minute. We are his representatives. We are his ambassadors. And so to be united together is powerful. It probably wouldn't be a sermon in this church if there was not some reference made to football. <laughs> and I'm going to make a reference to football. <laughs> I am actually a big football fan. Our household has to be. Coming from Manchester, we are big Manchester United fans. And it pains me to say, I can't see Rob here this morning, but it pains me to say that last Sunday afternoon... <laughs> Hi, Rob. Last Sunday afternoon, we watched Liverpool and Manchester City <laughs> play football. But I tell you what got to me. It wasn't the football. I've never noticed it in quite the same way. It was the singing of the Liverpool fans before the game began. I've never seen it like this. And God spoke to me through Liverpool. <laughs> the singing was amazing. It was powerful. Everyone was in unison singing, you'll never walk alone. 
Now, I don't know whether you've seen other uh, sporting events where somebody has got a mic and they start singing and half the audience are three bars behind and on the other side, they're like two bars ahead. Well, last week, this was in total unison. It was like this enormous choir. And God spoke to me and he said, that's how I want my church to be. I want, I want us to be in total harmony, in total unity, together for my cause. And what a cause it is. What a cause. It's a cause that sent Jesus to the cross. It's a cause that caused him to lay aside all his majesty that he might bring us back into fellowship with God. It cost him his life and it cost him more than we will probably ever really know. You know, when he took hold of our sin and he went to hell, when he was separated from his father, who'd always been with the father, one with the father, we cannot understand what it cost him. So what we have got is a tremendous cause to be unified over. And that is to bring others that he died for back into fellowship with him. In Ephesians 4, it says that God has given gifts to the church and we've all got a gift. Every single one of us. And if you say to me, yeah, everybody else seems to have it, but I've not. Let me tell you, you have. Whatever small you think your job is, it can be an encouragement to others. Let me tell you that those flowers, when I come into the building this morning, those flowers have been tended and planted and watered. They've all been deadheaded, which I, is a job I hate. And you do that for us, darling. Thank you. It blesses me because I love nature. It blesses me. And Therese came in this morning and she was full of what God's done for her in the last 24 hours. That encouraged me. And so you might not realise what an encouragement you are, but you are. The fact that you're here this morning encourages me, encourages one another. Don't ever undermine what the gift of encouragement is. Because if you can inspire and encourage somebody else to keep going, that is powerful. So we've all got our gifts. Why are we giving them? Well, in Ephesians 4, it says to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith. Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers, brethren, sorry, when brothers live together in unity. It's a beautiful and precious thing in the eyes of God. Jesus prayed for it. In John 17, verse 23, it says that they would all be one. He prayed for us that we would all be one, just as he and the, fa he and the Father is one, that the world might believe. So unity is incredibly important. I'm going to check me check the time because I get carried away yeah okay <clears throat> now if going back to this uh, passage I read in Philippians Paul uses four ifs if you've got any encouragement from being united with Christ if you've got any comfort from his love, if 
there's any fellowship with the Spirit if there's any tenderness and compassion then he's asking them to make his joy complete. It was a great church, this. And in Ofsted terms, I mean, I, I, I have a background in education. I'm, I'm fully aware of Ofsted. In fact, it was a nightmare, Ofsted. <laughs> but when the Ofsted had been, if you'd had a good report, you'd tend to put a banner up outside your school. This is a, a good school. This is an outstanding school. And I think Paul would have put a banner up that said, this is a good church with outstanding features. So there was still a bit more room. There's still a bit more room to improve. I would say over this church, we are a good church with some outstanding features. But do we want, are we perfect? No. And do we want to get an excellent report from God? Yes, we do. We want everything we do from this church to have an excellent report. You know, on the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up to preach, it said there were daily those coming that were being saved. Daily. And it said they'd, they found a good reputation with God and with man. Now, I'm delighted that we have a good reputation in this community. We do some fantastic things within the community. And we've got a good reputation. It, it's not a church that we think, oh, you know, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to admit I belong there. Because actually, we've got a good reputation. But, you know, we, can't, we cannot rest on our laurels and we can't become complacent. And there's, there's greater things that God has in store for us. So he gives us four ifs and then he gives us four of his desires. Those four are being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and being one in purpose. Now then, according to the Companion uh, Bible, the book called the Companion Bible, the Greek word for if can be translated also as since. And if we put the word since there, it kind of slightly changes the emphasis. So I'm going to read them four things again with the word since. Since you have encouragement from being united with Christ, since you have comfort from his love, since you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and since you have tenderness and compassion, it changes slightly the emph emphasis because it's coming from the um, premise that we've already got those attributes. And I believe we have. Um, it's not bigging us up. I believe God has been very gracious with this church. And we have. There are so many of us that we are. We are encouraged because we're united to Christ. And that keeps us going through all kinds of difficult times. We're... All those put four points, all those ifs, when you change it and substitute the word since, I believe we can fit in there. This is what I actually really want to be able to say. That since we have encouragement from being united with Christ, we are going to persevere until we see all those breakthroughs that we're looking for. Since we have comfort in his love, we're going to accept the difficulties along the way, but we're going to be more determined to comfort others out of the comfort that we have received from him. Since 
I have fellowship and we have fellowship with the Spirit, we're going to have confidence to boldly step out in faith, knowing that we've heard from God. Because fellowship with the Spirit is not one way. Fellowship is like a conversation in a way. You can't have a conversation that's all one way. It just becomes like a rhetoric. Conversation means two, coming together and communicating. And fellowship is not one way. And I can talk for England, as you know. But, you know, I want to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit in fellowship with him. And then I can go and implement what he's speaking directly to me about. So since I have fellowship with him, I'm going to have confidence to step out boldly in faith, knowing that I've heard from him. Since I have, and since we have, not just me, since we have tenderness and compassion, we're going to do things for others that of ourselves we couldn't do in order to show his love. Um, very briefly, I remember one incident when I was working at Blid Blidworth Oaks Primary School where God took me out of my comfort zone and he, he allowed me to be able to do something that I would never have been able to do. And it's a very, very simple thing, this. Um, I did a lot of home visits and there was one particular family that I had a lot of involvement with. Very needy family. And I went one day and the lady said, would you like, like a cup of coffee? And I said, yes. And in my head, we were stood in a kitchen and in my head, I saw the state that the house was in. She was throwing... Uh, chunks of ham down to the cat that was eating on the floor. There was dirty pots everywhere. And in the sink, there was a scum right round the bowl. And she got a cup straight out of that sink. She poured the water out of it and she made me a cup of coffee. I didn't want to drink it. I did not... Everything in me was revulsed by that. It was, I found it revolt because that's one of my little, well, I think we all would have felt the same. But Jesus gave me, the, do you know, the scripture came to me, you, will, you won't drink any deadly thing. It won't harm you. And so I said, thank you. And I took that cup of coffee and in the name of Jesus, I drank that coffee. But you know what? I believed at that time that that was the most effective way of showing love to that person. And so God, God gave me a gift that morning to be able to do it. We are to demonstrate our unity. We're not just to talk about it. We're not just to take it for granted. We've got to be like-minded, having the same love, being of one in spirit and purpose. These are the two areas that Paul was so passionate about, glorifying God and proclaiming the gospel. If, as a church, we don't proclaim the gospel United, standing together with to real togetherness and with one purpose, we'll send a, an unattractive message out. We'll send a confused message. And ultimately, we will become impotent. We have got to stand together. We have got to put on a united front, not just in word, but in action. And I am glad to be part of this church because 
I'm not here standing up saying we're not like this. Actually, we are. But we are getting prepared. We are getting to prepared by just sowing this again into our foundations, by building it once again so that we're aware this is who we are. But we've got to guard it. We've got to guard against our enemy. Because when that wave hits, we, church might look, begin to start looking a bit messy. There might be things we don't like. There might be people that come in with all kinds of addictions and issues and problems. And if we're not careful, the enemy will come in like a sly old fox and start to disrupt our unity. And if he gets us there, a, what is it, a kingdom that's divided can't stand and it will fall. So all I'm doing this morning is reminding us we are united. We are going forward. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church, will not stop his church from moving forward. But we cannot be complacent. And I am so encouraged and excited that this church has got a clear vision ahead of it. It's to work with God in restoring, in seeing breakthrough, and then in seeing his miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm a part of it. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, Jen. Come on, church. Let's get our hands together and thank her again for that tremendous message. Thank you so much. Come on, who's, who's encouraged and who's ready for what God's about to do, amen? And what God is already doing in our midst, amen? And come on, amen. we're in for a great ride. And this is amazing that we get to worship together. We get to journey together and we get to partner with God together, amen? Should we all stand if we're excited and ready? We're going to worship the Lord again, amen? to come that covers me when I kneel down at your feet it's a place of healing it's a place where I find freedom there's a It's a place of healing, it's a place I live in, freedom. Watch and take a couple hands together. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship If there's a love that lives in me For you, Lord, my Savior King Great to sin that's finding Leads me to a place of
Hallelujah. I'm going to worship. Do you know I have that desire to speak the gospel and to bring the glory to God? And I just am so amazed how open people are if we're bold enough to have the confidence, as Jan said, to step out and to speak. And the worst thing they can say to you, I believe, let's hope this is true, it has been in my case, is I'm just not interested. And it doesn't stop me speaking the gospel, being the glory of God. I was so encouraged. Thank you so much. And there's so much in what Jana said. So much in what Jana said. I want to encourage you to go back and get over 100 hits. Watch your back on YouTube. I'm only kidding, but just watch your back because there's so much in there. I couldn't write quick enough with some of the points that Jan was making. I'm going to watch it back. So I think what Jan said today is really, really important for this church. That unity, and I agree that we've got a good church, but it's so easy for things to come in and disturb it. Otherwise, every revival that's taking place would have kept on going. But it didn't because the enemy worked its way into that situation and suddenly men and women thought we didn't need God anymore and we need God at every situation, both the highs and the lows, we need God to be in control and walking his way, well I want to tell you I'm a surfer, bodyboarder, sorry don't want to exaggerate, uh, a bodyboarder as opposed to a surfer but you know we used to sit in the water for hours to watch that wave coming out at sea and the wave was took ages to get there but the thing is we were looking and fixing our eyes on the outward sea not the beach to see when the wave was rising so that we could catch the wave and it could carry us to shore and I can see the wave I've seen the wave it's a fantastic word because I've seen the wave and the wave is big but it's not a wave of destruction it's a wave of restoration, breakthrough, and miracles. And I've seen that. I can see it. And what we've got to do is just keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And when things aren't going our way, just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And look outwards. And I can see what God is doing in this place. Encouraged to watch it back. Thank you so much for your encouragement this morning. And your faithfulness in bringing that. And even adapting to a word when Daniel said, prophesy. Uh, but that's encouraging, Dan. That's perfect. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Can I just um, 
say to close that um, Tuesday, just a reminder. Just take a deep breath. We're here to celebrate the life of Lynette. We're here at 11 o'clock. If you can help with tea and coffee after the service while we go to the crematorium, that will be helpful. Um, but we'll sort everything else out between us during the day tomorrow. But on the day, it would be helpful if there are a few people, while we wait for the family to... Re- Come over here, Mark. You know I'm not very good at reading lips when... Okay, put chairs and tables out. Sorry, yes. Um, it's a good point. So we do need some help on that. Patios are, <coughs> excuse me, patios are bringing forth food and taking care of the catering and serving that. But I know people want to serve, as Lynette served. And if you can make it, um, please do. The procession will stop at Tesco at 10 to. And if you want to walk behind Lynette as she comes up the drive and into church, then you're more than welcome to do that. Um, so just be down at Tesco and gather at that place. And I just want to pray and thank God for the next life here and now, not just on Tuesday, but here and now. For the way in which she lived her life with such confidence and boldness in stepping out in the things of the kingdom of God. And we pray for you, Ryan, and the family as you approach this day for strength for the power of his Holy Spirit as we look back over a life lived well. So if you can make it, 11 o'clock here, crematorium is for family only, and we'll get off there, and then we'll be back. So if you can stop nibbling the food before we get back, that would be useful. But uh, it would be great to see if you can make it. It's going to be a wonderful, it's going to be sad, but I tell you it's going to be a wonderful celebration of a life lived with passion, with confidence, to serve and to hug as many people. If there's a Guinness Book of Records for hugging people, I think the net would have it. In fact, we ought to start that in honor of her name. All right, enough said for me. Tea and coffee next door, if you're able to stay with us and stay and have uh, tea and coffee and a biscuit and just share what God's been saying. I love it when people are talking about the Word of God sharing what impact they've had in their life and do that if you can the Lord pray a blessing over you the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you be gracious to you today, tomorrow the coming week, the coming month the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace give you peace in Jesus name Amen. Amen.